Welcome to the lesson number two of our Six Sigma Green Belt program series. My name is Ajit Sharma. So in lesson number two, <clears throat> we will understand the data distribution because this data distribution is really the key in the understanding of Six Sigma. So lesson number two, understanding data distribution. Let us uh, understand the data distribution by this an example which we also gave in lesson number one of our previous video. Now these are the car speeds recorded by a policeman on a certain day in a particular highway. So this is 65 kilometers per hour, 66 kilometers per hour. 75 kilometers per hour and so on. So the policeman recorded these car speeds by his camera on a particular day. Now let us understand how this data is distributed because the data distribution understanding is really the key in Six Sigma understanding. So in order to understand this let us make a tally chart which you used to make in your schools and let us group this data. So what we are going to do in the first phase of understanding the data distribution, we are going to group this data first and let us see what happens. So I make a group of this from 40 km per hour to 45 km per hour. This is one group. Another group is 45 km per hour to 50 km per hour. And the third group is 50 km per hour to 55 km per hour and so on. So this is the grouping I have made of this data in terms of the speed. You can make any uh, sort of groups and the results will be the same. So what do I do next? I make a grouping of this data and see how many car speeds, how many car speeds out of this lie in each group. For example, the first group of data is 40 km per hour to 45 km per hour. From this data I see that there is only one reading. So that is why I put one here. And which is that reading? Let us see. It is 45. So I see just one and let me check if I can see another one. No, there isn't. So I can see only one reading 45, which is in this group. So similarly, let us see what happens in the, how many readings are there in the next group, which is from 45 to 50. So if you see there is 45 here also and 45 here also. So I am considering the upper limit of the grouping. If you consider the lower limit of the grouping, then also the results would be the same. So it doesn't really matter. So uh, any limit you can select. I have selected the upper limit. That means if there is a clash between the two groups, I am going to put the data in the group in which it is the upper limit. So 45 is the upper limit here and there is only one data here. So I put it here. Let us go to the other group, which is from 45 to 50. And I see that there is also only one uh, car speed which is in this range of group. And similarly, I will put the numbers below each subgroups. So for example, there are two readings in uh, the group from 50 to 55 and so on. So what do we do next? How do I really understand the data distribution? <clears throat> so this is what I was saying. You have only 45, only one reading. So I put number one here. There is only one reading here, 50. So I put number one here. Let us take another example, 65 to 70. So there are three readings. Uh, yes, 66 lies between 65 and 70. 68 lies between 65 and 70 and 69 
lies between 65 and 70. So there are three. One, two, and three. So I put three here. Similarly, you have to do uh, for all the groups and put the number of readings that you get in the data. So what are these called? These are called frequencies. So frequency is the rate of occurrence. What is frequency? Frequency is nothing but the rate of occurrence. So the rate of occurrence here is 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So these are the uh, occurrence of the data or the frequency of the data. How many times the data has come in this group? What happens next? I plot this on a graph. So on the x-axis, I have the groups of data. So on the x-axis, I have the groups of the data. So the first is 40 to 45, 45 to 50, 50 to 55 and so on. And on the y-axis is the frequency of data or the frequency of the car speeds in our case. So for example, uh, we saw that from 45, from 40 to 45, there is only one data. So I make this bar as one unit, right? Similarly, I do this for all the groups. Like for example, from 75 to 80, I can see from the table, there are six car speeds recorded by the policeman. So I mark here six against this six and I draw a bar. So similarly, what I have done is for each groups, I have put the number of data that they are occurring in that particular group. Right? Now, I will join the midpoints of each column. Midpoint of this to be joined by midpoint of this to be joined by midpoint of this to this to this to this to this and so on. Right? So what you will get? You will get a graph. You will get a graph like this. So this is the graph you will get by joining the midpoints of the columns that were made by putting the number of data that occur in that group. Right? Number of data that occur in the group. I made these columns. I join their midpoints and I get this graph. Now there is something interesting about this graph. If you see this graph, this is rising from here. It attains a peak and slowly it goes down. Although you say, you see here that it's going down and again up. But on the whole, on the whole, it goes down and down. So it starts, goes to a peak, comes down. Now, if you uh, make these bars smaller, for example, I have taken a group size of 5. 45 minus 40 is 5. I have take, taken a group size of 5. If you decrease this from 5 to 3 to 2 to 1, or even in decimals, what will happen? The width of these columns will go on decreasing. Now this is 5, it will become 4, 3, 2, 1. So the width, the thickness of these columns will go on increasing because you are decreasing the, uh, the width or the gap, the range of the group. And if you do that, the number of columns will increase. So the width will go shorter, 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 shorter. And how many columns you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You have 16 columns here. These columns will go on increasing to 20, to 25, to 40, to 50. So as you go on decreasing the group size, the width of these columns will decrease and the number of columns will go on increase from the current 16 to maybe 20 to 30 to 50 and if you earth, uh, uh, if you uh, infinitely make these columns smaller and smaller and bigger in number this curve will become more and more smooth so like you are seeing a sharp point here you are seeing a sharp point here you are seeing a sharp point here this will go away because you have made the number of columns infinite 
by making the width of the column infinitely small. So this group, this uh, curve will become like this, a smooth curve. Okay, and it will look like something like this. So if you make the width of the column smaller and smaller, automatically the number of columns will increase because uh, the readings will be split in more number of groups and the curve which is joining the midpoints of the columns will become more and more smooth and it will look like this blue color curve which you see on your screen. This blue color curve is a very special curve which will come to you again and again and again in Six Sigma. This curve which looks like a bell, which looks like a bell, it's called a bell shaped curve. This is called as the normal distribution curve. This blue color curve is called a normal distribution curve. With this as the mean, so if you mark the center line of the peak column, this is called the mean of the distribution. This is called the mean of the distribution or the average of the distribution, average speed of the cars. And this curve is called the normal distribution curve. It is also called as the Gauss curve by the name of the person who invented it. So, in the normal distribution curve, you get an idea as to how the data is distributed across the mean. Okay, so what do we do next in understanding of the distribution? So, this is the curve which we get, this blue color curve which we uh, got in the previous slide. This is called the normal distribution curve and we say that the data is distributed normally. For such a curve, we say the data is distributed normally. In most of the cases in practical life, uh, unless there is a special cause, the data are distributed, the data is distributed normally and this is called normal distribution. So let us say we have a data with us um, for the car speeds which follows a normal distribution and the standard deviation sigma. So we have seen how to calculate the standard deviation in the previous video. So this is the, let's say this is the standard deviation sigma for this particular normal distribution curve and this is the mean. What is the meaning of the standard deviation then? So I told you in the previous lesson that in this video I will tell you the relation between the standard deviation sigma and the normal distribution curve. So what is the relation between the standard deviation sigma and the normal distribution blue color curve? The relation and how they are associated is follows. If you go one time standard deviation on the right side, that means on the upper side of the mean and one times the standard deviation below, that is minus below the mean, one sigma, one standard deviation up and one standard deviation below, then this data between these two red lines on the normal distribution curve contains 68% of the data population. So in our case, the policeman was recording the speeds of the car. That means uh, the next car, he is going to monitor 68%. There is a chance, 68%, there is a chance that the car speed is going to lie between the mean of the car speeds plus one sigma and minus one sigma. This is the physical interpretation of the relation between standard deviation sigma and the normal distribution curve. Plus one sigma and minus one sigma across the mean contains 68% of the data population. So the area under the curve of the blue curve area under the blue curve cut by this uh, red line that means the shaded area will contain 68% of the population. Remember this is a data distribution. 
this blue color line is the data distribution so all the data distributed under this shaded area contains 68% of the data population this is the relation between the standard deviation sigma and the blue color line next if i go plus 2 sigma remember we had gone plus 1 sigma in the previous case now in this case if i go plus 2 sigma on the right hand side and minus 2 sigma on the left hand side then this shaded area this shaded area will contain 95% of the data population that means if the policeman takes the reading of the next speed of the car by his camera there is a 95% chance that that speed of the car will be lying between the mean car speed plus 2 sigma and minus 2 sigma right and if i go to plus 3 sigma and minus 3 sigma then the area under this uh, normal distribution curve that means the data in the shaded area the data in this shaded area will contain 99.7 percent of the data population so once again if the policeman records the speed of the car there is 99.7 percent chance that that car speed is going to lie between the mean car speed plus 3 sigma and minus 3 sigma right this is the physical explanation between the standard deviation and the relation it has got with the blue color normal distribution curve this incidentally is called the empirical rule of normal distribution what do you mean by empirical empirical means something which has been observed rather than theory theoretically proved empirical as a word in english it means observed so it is observed um, data that plus minus one sigma across the mean contains 68 percent of the data population right plus minus one sigma across the mean contains 68 percent of the data population plus minus two sigma across the mean contains 95 percent of the data population and plus minus three sigma contains across the mean contains 99.7 percent of the data population this 68 95 and 99.7 percentage of data population is called the empirical rule of normal distribution so what does it mean in our case in the car speeds now in the previous example the policeman recorded the car speeds of 41 cars right i show you the data of 41 car speeds now if we calculate the standard deviation it is coming out to be 18.6 km per hour in lesson one of my videos i have already uh, explain how to calculate the standard deviation sigma and the mean car speed from the same data i have calculated for you is 82 kilometers per hour so what does it mean physically standard deviation 18.6 km per hour and mean car speed 82 km per hour what does it mean it means that 68 percent of the car speeds population will lie between mean plus minus one time standard deviation that means it will lie between 82 minus 18.6 which is 63.4 from this to 82 plus 18.6 which is 100.6 so the next car that the police is going to record for speed there is a 68% chance that the car speed will lie between 63.4 and 100.6 km per hour. How did I get that? The mean plus standard deviation and the mean minus one time standard deviation. So mean plus standard deviation you get the upper limit. Mean minus 
one time standard deviation you get the lower limit and you get the range of the speed in which uh, there is 68% chance that the car speed will lie. Similarly, there is 95% chance that the car speed population uh, will lie between mean plus minus two times standard deviation. So if you multiply 18.6 by two, you will get two times standard deviation. You get the lower limit by subtracting 82 and this you get 44.8 and if you add 82 plus 2 times 18.6 you get 119.2 km per hour. So there is 95% chance that the next car that the police is going to monitor will lie between 44.8 and 119.2 km. Right? How do you get that? Mean plus minus upper limit mean plus 2 times standard deviation and lower limit mean minus 2 times standard deviation. And similarly, 99.7% of the data population will lie between mean plus minus three times standard deviation. So 68 minus three times 18.6 will give you 26.2 and 82 plus three, point, three times 18.6 will give you 137.8. This is just the physical interpretation of what we have learned before the empirical rule of the normal distribution and this is the relation between this is the physical interpretation between the standard deviation sigma and the normal distribution curve. So please remember this 68% is mean plus minus 1 sigma 95% of the normal distribution curve is mean plus minus 2 sigma and 99% of the population is mean plus minus 3 sigma. So remember from the lesson 1 the speed limit was the this is the speed limit that the policeman had put on the road that the lower limit is 50 km per hour and the upper limit is 50 uh, sorry 110 km per hour. This was the limit displayed by the policeman on the road. So what does it mean then from this case where we get the car mean of 82 km per hour and standard deviation of 18.6 km per hour. What does it mean physically? It means that 68% uh, of the people driving on that road will most likely not get a ticket from the police because you see they are in the range of 63.4 to 100 which which is well within the limit of 50. They are neither below 50, neither above 110, so they are not going to get a fine from the police. And at least 5% will most likely get a ticket from the police because uh, this range itself is going beyond the specification of the police. This is less than 50, this is more than 110, and this is 95%. So at least 5% because already this is 95 here. So 100 minus 95 is 5. But I am saying at least 5 because some people will also fall in the 95% population. So more than 5% of the people will get a fine from the police. So we see that standard deviation gives us a measurement of variation of data. So standard deviation gives us the variation of the data, how the data is behaving above uh, the mean or below the mean, how much it goes above the mean, how much it goes below the mean and how much of the population of the data lies in 68% or 95% or 99.7% depending it is plus minus 1 sigma plus minus two standard deviation or plus minus three standard deviation. So it gives us an idea of the spread of the distribution or distribution across the mean. So I hope I'm clear on the physical interpretation of the standard deviation and the relation that it has got with the normal distribution curve. And I hope you have also understood how really you get the normal 
distribution curve it is nothing but from the grouping of the data you make columns and when then columns become infinite you get a smooth curve which is called the normal distribution curve so in the next video which is lesson number 3 we will see the relation between sigma that is your standard deviation and the sigma level these are not the same thing uh, we are slowly progressing uh, further in our Six Sigma Green Belt journey. And as I told you, if you see all these videos, you will sit at home free of cost and become an excellent master of uh, Six Sigma Green Belt resource in your organization. This is my guarantee. So uh, next video, we will see the relation between Sigma standard deviation and Sigma level. Now to get lesson three as fast as possible, as soon as we release it, please subscribe to this channel and after you sub subscribe if you click on this bell icon you will be the first one to be notified as soon as the next video is uploaded thank you very much uh, for watching and uh, take uh, very good care of yourself